counseling micro skills, offering affirmations with Gina Co and Sandra Collins. Well, Sandra, in an earlier session, a conversation, we were talking about allyship and your your desire and your moving forward towards becoming, you know, a great ally. Providing transparency, overviewing. Is that something you want to continue to talk about today? Checking perceptions. Yeah, I think that would be really helpful, Gina. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's dive in. Probing. Okay, well, I had started to talk about my, um, my struggle around how to best show up uh, as an ally. And I think there are many ways in which I have been doing that over time, but I find, I find the more I read and the more I develop my own level of consciousness around um, just the, the so many ways in which colonialism and racism in particular have affected who we are in society and and are so ingrained in the way that, that white people in particular think and present in the world. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how how I use this time period in my life where I'm semi-retired to, to really um, invest in allyship. First of all, congratulations for being semi-retired, Sandra. <laughs> and it sounds to me you're quite I'm going to say motivated to take action to mm -hmm. become this, as you said, you know, how do I best show up, right? To be this mm -hmm. ally. Offering affirmations. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's a, that's a good point. It is about, it's about a different kind of motivation, I think, because I'm sort of free from academia now. Um, so for one thing, I get to say what I think about some of the stuff that has some of the ways in which colonization and other isms have presented themselves and continue to be enacted through educational systems um, and in particular grad counseling, grad counseling programs. But that's kind of an out there thing. And so I'm also trying to figure out how do I, um, where am I best positioned to actually um, be out there in the world and making a difference? Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing is beyond, I'm going to call it resisting certain systems, certain systems of oppression. Now moving forward in your next chapter, you want to, would, would it be fair to say, like, you know, personally, professionally continue to, to be this ally to support racialized, minoritized people? Hmm. Summarizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I think I, I see opportunities sort of in my, I mean, the opportunities are, are always there in my day-to-day -day life. Um, to um, be attentive and to um, name things and um, identify when I see, um, you know, the subtle forms of racism that play out in day-to-day -day life. And I think over time I've become better at, I'm, I mean, I know I miss some, um, but I become better at um, not missing them. Um, and, you know, taking the opportunity to invite people into having conversations about them. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. And then there's also, you know, I look at the, the ways in which things are shifting in the world around me, particularly, I think, I don't know how you feel about this, but in the last sort of five to 10 years, it, it feels like there's this sort of new license to um, offer to white supremacy. Um, and at the same time, there's, I'm really encouraged by all of the initiatives to bring BIPOC voices into um, counseling psychology and into um, conversations generally and the changes in the media and a lot of those kinds of things. So, mm -hmm. yes, I'm trying to figure out where I fit in this new chapter into all of that. Yeah. Sandra, I want to express how I, I am very touched myself as an Asian psychologist, a racialized you know, therapist, for, for, for you to come here today to talk about, again, how to be a better ally, to be, you know, continue to be reflective. How do I support? How do I, uh, you know, again, resist, you know, dominant discourses? Self-disclosing. So I, yeah, I just want to express that. 
I, I feel it. I feel how much you want to move towards this direction. Not, not that you aren't already. So thank you for that. Offering affirmations. Yeah. And I mean, it's mutual because I learned so much from you. It gives me an opportunity to bounce ideas off and to have these kind of conversations that um, is different than having conversations with my spouse, who's also white. And although we do have those conversations all of the time. So, yeah. Mm. I, I, and I hear it's even in your personal life, you, you still have these conversations, right? It shows how, yeah. how, yeah. how important this is for you. Offering affirmations. And Sandra, I, I also want to disclose in our sessions together, I have not felt uh, Sandra is relying heavily on me to educate, you know, to point out self-disclosing. In fact, you do your own work mm-hmm. and then you would bring it forth in, in our sessions. And we, you know, we, we discuss and we process and we dismantle, we untangle. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. again, I see how, how, how highly motivated you are to, to, into, I'm going to use the word becoming right. This even more, more impactful ally offering affirmations Mm -hmm. yeah and that's a i mean being a therapist myself that's a really important right or or and that's part of what i'm part of what i feel at this point in my life you know like i i thought i would retire and that would and i would be done but i realized that it will be a great loss sandra (laughs) (laughs) and i'm partly and i'm partly not because i see this work still has to be done you know and how do I invite other white people, white students um, or male students or people with privilege in different areas to sink more deeply into their own awareness of what that means, you know, what that privilege means without um, without tipping over into um, pulling on the kinds of defenses um, that I often see. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's where I'm, that's what I'm thinking about these days. 